Then thank you, Steve, and thank you for everybody for taking some time just to see what uh, we're doing at Neverware and uh, trying to help uh, lots of uh, users out there get more life out of their computers. Um, so the format of this is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, Cloud Reading itself is a relatively simple product to discuss. So we're going to talk uh, maybe about five minutes uh, just for kind of background on our company. Uh, we'll dive in uh, to the product itself, uh, which takes no more than about 10 minutes. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, basically kick it over for a Q&A and uh, any questions that you want to uh, get involved, uh, we can certainly address on the call. And then uh, everybody by joining uh, will be receiving a uh, unique trial link uh, courtesy of Steve, uh, which will give you 15% off of any uh, licenses that you wish to purchase uh, should you want to uh, actually buy CloudReady. Um, and in that trial, obviously, it's a free uh, opportunity to be able to test it out and see how everything works on your own machines. Uh, so without further ado, again, my name is Jake Shea, and I uh, head up our sales team at Neverware. Oops. Sounded like I just muted myself. We can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Sorry, I just yep. said I was muted. Um, so as uh, everyone already knows uh, who Steve is, but uh, we've uh, teamed up to help uh, kind of spread awareness around uh, this new product because it's only been out for about a year, um, and we've been uh, having a lot of success in the last uh, six months. But uh, before further ado, I'm going to play just a quick uh, two-minute video here, um, and everyone should be able to hear the audio through uh, their dial-in, um, and then the video will play on your screen. So just one moment. I've been here 24 years. Uh, when I first came here, we had about 20% of our kids qualified for a free and reduced lunch. Now we're close to 75% of our kids. The mantra here is we don't take any excuses, period. There are no excuses. Our kids need to compete in a worldwide marketplace. One of the things that we know is that if, if a child cannot read at grade level by the end of third grade, uh, the research is pretty clear that their opportunities, not only educationally, but in life, are pretty poor. And that's where we use Neverware, where we have a specific lab set up. And we use a lot of research-based software. You know, they're right there where they have to reach a little bit to move, and then they, and the software moves them slowly up through, through the progression of what it is they need to learn. Transparency is the word we use a lot because our goal is that people aren't thinking about technology, they're just using it. And if we want a student to learn a tech skill, it needs to be part of our curriculum. They shouldn't be learning it because they have to, just to function. Teacher reaction was similar to ours because they uh, kind of said, so that's it? It just works? That's great, you know? <laughs> and I think, you know, they, they had become familiar with Chrome but there's something different about sitting down on a PC, clicking once and everything that you wanted to launch is there. But just the launch time alone, uh, I think was one of the main attractions for the teaching staff because the lab isn't wasting their time anymore. They just walk in and get started with the interventions and getting the kids right to the software that they need to be with. But at the end of the day, we're trying to get the technology out of the way, so they're just using it and being creative and doing what they need to do without a lot of troubleshooting. Having products like yours makes it much easier to support because we don't have as many issues. We really haven't had any issues so far with Neverware. You know, we're much more effective, and, and that's what we're all about here, trying to utilize time effectively. Time is money, and instructional time is, is very, very important to us. Okay, so that uh, was a little video that we created with a school district uh, just about 15 miles outside of Flint, Michigan, uh, called Ovid LC Area Schools. Uh, and they approached us uh, at the end of last summer uh, with a pretty significant need, and that's that. Um, they quite literally were down to their last functional uh, computers they would be able to be used for instruction. Um, so 
uh, we came in and uh, helped kind of solve that uh, challenge, and that's obviously what the purpose of what we're about to discuss today is. So uh, with that said, uh, again, Neverware is a, a technology company based out of New York City. Uh, we're about uh, five years old now, um, and we uh, began with a product uh, that was uh, essentially geared toward the same value proposition of helping schools get more uh, out of their existing computers um, and doing less. And so I'm just mute you, um, so the uh, goal of our company is very simple. Uh, it is to provide software solutions uh, whereby you can take your existing computers up to about nine years old uh, and convert them into speedy machines that are faster, more secure, and easier to manage. Um, so that first product was designed around VDI, which uh, is before Chromebooks kind of took over the K-12 market. Um, and Popular Science had named us the best new software of 2013 when that came out. Uh, and we were able to convert a little over 15,000 computers in the New York City Department of Ed, uh, which for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, the schools in the New York City Department of Ed run essentially uh, completely independently, all 1,800 of them. Uh, they have their own budgets and decision-making own everything. Uh, now that has its benefits, but one of the challenges is that uh, almost, I would say under 10% of them actually have a staffed technician in the building to help with their computers. Uh, and that left uh, many, many schools with uh, kind of deserted labs and laptop carts that were just collecting dust and teachers that were essentially so frustrated that they just gave up on technology. So we came in and helped uh, kind of solve that challenge with that first product. And actually, just this past week, uh, Cloud Ready, our new product, uh, has come in to help solve that for tens of thousands of computers. Uh, quite literally, more than uh, 50,000 computers are going to be converted this coming year. So um, the reason that we launched this product is as you look at uh, the market today uh, as compared to previously, uh, you'll notice that uh, the entire uh, segment has basically gone into a new uh, a new. Uh, market, if you will. Um, Windows and Macs have dominated, uh, you know, for the last 30 years since computers uh, became personal and went into schools. But uh, Google has announced that in 2014 and 2015, uh, there were more Chromebooks sold than every other device combined. Um, and for those of you that are educators out there or any tech enthusiasts, you understand that they're affordable devices that, uh, as uh, Ovid Elsie's director of technology said, just help kind of technology get out of the way uh, so that kids can get to learning. Um, they're very speedy, they're affordable, they're easy to manage, they're virus-proof, all these great things. So uh, we as a company uh, looked at that and kind of what the value was of Chromebooks, and we said, well, look, we're doing this great stuff for Windows machines that are out of date. What can we do to help those districts that are starting to buy Chromebooks get more life out of them uh, and really kind of maximize the value of their existing investments in PCs, or Macs for that matter? So uh, we approached Google uh, just about two years ago now, uh, and we said, hey, here's what we're doing. Um, what do you think about us partnering together? And we create an operating system which will turn existing computers into Chromebooks. An interesting concept. Tell us you know, what your ideas are. Um, and fast forward about another six months later, and we had come up with a proof of concept uh, that was running on a old Dell D630 Latitude, um, which if you remember, those are 2007, 2008 machines. Uh, that were, you know, kind of workhorse machines back in the day. Uh, but the point here is that machines that were designed to run Windows or the Mac operating system uh, eight years ago even have plenty enough power to power uh, what would be the equivalent of the Chrome operating system on a Chromebook today, even a new piece of hardware. Um, and that's because uh, they were anticipating a very large footprint operating system that had to do a whole lot of things. Um, but as we've seen kind of the world progress in software, now everything is moving towards the cloud, and everything is web-based and uh, app-based, um, and thus you no longer need to download and have everything installed in your computers. So uh, we brought the kind of the best of both worlds together. Um, this operating system called Cloud Ready, you install on those aging PCs or Macs, uh, laptops or desktops, uh, and about 10 minutes later, uh, they're converted over to become a Chrome device. Uh, and when you use a Google management license, you can then actually enroll those devices into the Google admin console, manage them alongside any Chrome devices you already have so that all your policies are applied and everything uh, acts the same way. So uh, what's the win? Well, uh, first off, it's a very easy installation process. I mentioned it's only about 10 minutes per computer. 
Uh, and if you want to install a few computers at a time, you can do that. Um, the process is twofold. One, you can either use a USB stick, which uh, is a very of a couple hundred machines or less. Uh, if you're looking at a larger installation, uh, we can work with you on network imaging solutions, uh, solutions like Semantic Ghost or SCCM if you're in the Microsoft world, uh, and very quickly you can convert uh, thousands of machines over uh, as long as, again, your network is configured for uh, network deployments. Uh, the second kind of benefit here is that you're not wasting all that hardware uh, because as you continue to buy new devices, uh, instead of just replacing all the old computers with those new devices, now you can bring them back to life, uh, which uh, in tune with that third point helps expedite one-to-one -one adoption because all of a sudden, instead of having, let's just say 100 new devices, you can take those existing 100 and buy 100 new ones and all of a sudden have 200 useful devices. So uh, this is being broadcast right now from a 2008 uh, Dell Latitude E4200 uh, it was uh, obviously originally a Windows machine, since that's well before Chromebooks ever existed. Um, but if you take a quick look at the desktop here, uh, the interface should be pretty familiar to anyone who uses Chromebooks, or at least uh, knows what they're about. Uh, and uh, similar to, again, anything you've set up in the admin console, uh, both at the user and the device level, uh, all of your settings will sync over, apps, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to pop into this tab right now, uh, which is the Google admin console. And you'll notice it is quite literally exactly the same as the admin console you would use uh, in your schools uh, or elsewhere. And now the difference here is that when you go to Chrome devices within your Chrome management console, you'll start seeing new devices populate, which are going to be those PCs and Macs that you choose to convert. So normally you'll see a serial number at the top, uh, and that would be a Chromebook. Uh, but now you'll see the word cloud ready, and then your unique identifier becomes the MAC address uh, of the device uh, when it's licensed. Uh, so that way you can very easily uh, put those in different organizational units, uh, you know, adjust policies, deprovision them, whatever you need to do, uh, it's exactly the same way as your Chromebooks. Um, now the next thing I'm going to point out is that um, we built an operating system, uh, and thus we had to start with uh, specifying what machines uh, we can stand behind and essentially guarantee not just great performance, but ongoing support and auto updates. Uh, so just the way that Chromebooks get updated, we're consistently coding in uh, all of the product uh, and feature updates, in addition to all the security features that Google's uh, updating for Chrome OS, and we work very closely with them. So uh, the reason I'm on this page is you see we have uh, a little uh, link here called Broad Hardware Compatibility, and when you click that, uh, this tab opens up with a Google Doc that has a whole bunch of machines, uh, just a little over 200 of them, uh, broken down by manufacturer so that you can see what machines are officially certified by us and thus have a guarantee that they'll not just work, but that they'll continue to work year after year uh, because we're doing uh, continually uh, regression tests against them before we release updates. So uh, once you're done with uh, this, I would recommend, and this will be in an email we send out, but you can go right to neverware.com and find that link or again, wait for the email, but just check that your models are listed. And if they aren't, you can email us and we can see if we can get them supported for you. Uh, we just ask that you provide a rough volume of the machines you're considering because uh, all of the uh, development work is driven by demand uh, for specific models. Uh, now, second here, I want to uh, call out that on the right, you'll see that there's uh, a section called dual boot certified models. Uh, dual boot is a feature that we released just about two weeks ago. Um, and it is uh, the first time ever that uh, a PC can not just run Windows, but also Chrome without wiping out Windows uh, the way CloudRD traditionally does. Um, now this is meant for use cases where uh, you may have a teacher or a user group uh, that requires to have Windows still uh, because they have a legacy application or some reason that they absolutely need to have Windows, but they prefer to use Chrome uh, in the Chrome operating system for the majority of their uh, instruction or computing. Um, so that's what those machines are on the right. Again, this is only about two weeks old, so there's a lot less listed here, uh, but we're continually adding models uh, as they get tested against uh, our QA process. Um, and you'll note that these are uh, sometimes on the newer spectrum compared to the oldest machines we support, uh, and that's simply because when we test Windows on them, we want to make sure they have a consistent experience with things like uh, HD video and WebGL and all the great things that you'd want to be uh, doing on those computers. Okay.
So uh, just in the past couple of weeks, um, we've had a tremendous amount of media coverage that I wanted to call out. After this, you can kind of do your own independent research. Uh, there's a whole bunch of great uh, customer profiles where they've interviewed our schools and uh, gotten feedback. So uh, just note that if you Google uh, Cloud Ready or uh, Neverware, uh, you'll find a whole bunch of information out there from third parties that are pretty reputable uh, to give you uh, more insight into what we're doing. Um, and of course, if you have any uh, districts uh, that you'd like to speak with, uh, especially about their experience, um, we can certainly facilitate that and make sure that you get a good conversation going uh, with uh, someone within your region. Jake, did you so see the crisis. question? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I can't see the question. Are, me... are the ones listed on the, on the uh, compatibility list more desktops or laptops? Uh, so it's a, it's a pretty big split. Um, we have... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So every, everyone seems to be muted, but somebody was not. So I'm sorry about that. Um, so yes, it's a big split uh, between laptops and desktops. So I'll pop back there just for one minute. Um, so if you look at, let's just take Dell's for instance. Obviously, all the latitudes are going to be laptops, and all the optiplexes are going to be desktops. So uh, you can see it's a pretty even split. Um, but uh, as far as use cases are concerned, uh, each school is going to be at a different uh, kind of uh, stage of their uh, advancement towards Chrome. So some will have uh, potentially even completely deprecated their labs and just turned them into other instruction space. Um, others will have their labs still. So it really depends on what your use cases are. Okay. Um, Steve, please uh, feel free to interrupt if there's any uh, other questions because I'm not looking at the uh, chat while I'm in the presentation. Will do. Great, thanks. So on licensing, uh, we have two uh, licensing options. Uh, one is going to be an annual uh, kind of pay-as-you-go model, um, and that's an annual $25 license, uh, which includes everything that you need uh, from support to the operating system. Uh, the admin license, you'll note, is sold separately, uh, and that can be uh, obtained either through Neverware, uh, or if you have a reseller of your choice you'd like to work with, uh, you can certainly get those from them. Um, all licenses are fully transferable. So you don't have to worry about an older machine uh, dying on you and you losing that license. Uh, you can simply move it to another device at any time. Uh, the lifetime license option is uh, by far and away the most popular option uh, because there's obviously no recurring costs. Uh, and because it's transferable and there's no expiration, it's a very powerful license when you look at the fact that you can continue to use it uh, for years and years to come uh, by just making that one-time payment. Jake, do you want another question? Yes, please. So uh, Machi asks, uh, any problems that happen after installing the OS? Um, so I'm not sure what problems would be uh, coming up. Um, I don't know. Are there any specific questions or problems that you might be wondering about? I'm imagining that that question is, um, in, you know, does something come up that's not exactly like a Chromebook, or could there be a hardware compatibility that isn't discovered mm. until something is used? Um, yeah, great, great I, question. I know you've added the ability to, uh, was it Netflix? I can't remember, but there were a couple of things that you've been working on. Yep, absolutely. So um, I'm just everywhere.com, and uh, you'll see, guys, that I'm going to Support Center here, and I'm going to point you to two documents, or really just one document at this point, uh, that uh, will note any differences to Chromebooks. Uh, but, Steve, that's a good call out on Netflix. Uh, was not previously supported, but now is. Uh, in the education version, we actually intentionally do not uh, enable it. Um, so if that's a feature that you want, uh, please give uh, us that feedback because uh, we can enable it, but we don't because we've heard uh, loud and clear from a lot of customers that they'd prefer it just be not uh, able. Um, but with that said, uh, at the bottom uh, here, I'm sorry, I just talked through me scrolling. Uh, if you go to uh, support, support center, and then when you scroll down the page uh, to quick document access, You'll see at the very bottom here, this bullet point, uh, Cloud Ready and Chromebook differences. Uh, that will be a Google Doc that you can open up. Um, and this, these are the uh, features that, uh, as Steve identified, we're continually working on to uh, essentially get down to uh, as many features back as possible. Um, so uh, this is something I won't spend too much time on because I want you guys to review it on your own time. It's just one page, it's not a lot. Uh, but uh, the main ones that I would call out are that uh, MP4 feed, uh, playback is not uh, a supported codec. Uh, that's due to licensing restrictions, not because we don't want to do it. 
um, but just note that it is supported in our free version, which cannot be enrolled in the admin console. So those users at home uh, can use uh, MP4 and Netflix, things like that, uh, but we do not enable it for the education customers. Um, everything else I believe is uh, very, very minor, um, but you are welcome. Uh, Steve, is anybody calling out anything that they wanna talk about in here? No, and, I, and this isn't exactly related, but it is worth noting that I own several Chromebooks and they don't have CD-ROMs, right? And they don't have yes. a printer port. So even though you're converting an older computer that may have a CD-ROM and a printer port, that's not a part of the functionality of a Chromebook, so it's not going to work. That is yep, yeah, absolutely correct. So yeah, you, you guys uh, should expect that the drivers that are supported are going to be ones that are used with Chromebooks. Uh, so yeah, CD drive is definitely not uh, a supportable uh, feature. Um, and then printing is being done uh, similar to the way that Chromebooks are done through Google's uh, cloud print. Now that being said, if you do, like I did set up one machine as a dual boot. So if you need that functionality, you can boot back into Windows. Correct, yes. Okay. Um, so I hope that addresses the uh, question that was asked just around, is there anything after installation that you might uh, run into? Uh, but from a feature side, that would be everything that we've ever identified was on that sheet. Uh, the second would be uh, just on the initial implementation, uh, we may need to open up uh, your filter to access our update server or our licensing server, uh, but those are just white labeling or white listing uh, URLs. So uh, outside of that, there shouldn't be anything uh, that pops up. Okay, so uh, one of the, uh, I guess, kind of best features, if you will, of Cloud Ready is that it's a downloadable operating system. Um, so we enable uh, a pilot uh, for five licenses for three weeks uh, with obviously no risk because uh, you can always go back to the previous operating system if you don't like it for whatever reason. Um, but if you see that URL there, uh, go.neverware.com slash sh, um, that is Steve's uh, referral link which will essentially get you 15% off of your uh, purchase licenses. And it'll also set you up again for this trial at the same time. So uh, I definitely recommend taking advantage of it um, because again, while you can use the free version at home uh, or obviously in your schools, that version does not have the ability, even if you want to, uh, to enroll into the Google Management Console. So this will give you education licenses, which again, if you want during a pilot, you can enroll it to your domain, uh, just deprovision at the end and you'll get that Management Console license back. Uh, but it's a, a great way to experience it, put it in a couple uh, locations, and you can see how it all works. Are there any questions on the uh, pilot program? I, I don't. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, oh, this is not. I just wanted to help you out here. Your screen before that has a typo. <laughs> oh, before so that. It's, it, it's separately. It's spelled incorrectly. You know, librarian, I guess. Separately. Oh, you you called it out. Thank you. I will, I will definitely make that edit at the end. Thank Sorry you. about that. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. That's very helpful. Okay. Well, um, if there's any uh, final questions, please definitely uh, feel free to call them out now. Um, otherwise, as Steve mentioned, we'll send out an email that has uh, relevant information in there and also Steve's uh, sign up link for the trial. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to go back just to the chat window, and uh, yeah, looks like everybody has their questions answered. So um, I'll kick it back over to Steve, I guess, for a wrap-up, and then uh, yeah, feel free to reach out if anything else pops up. We'll wait and see if any questions come up. But uh, um, you know, I did download. You the, obviously you can do the trial version. You can also go download the personal version if you're just interested, say, in tonight and putting it on a machine, and I had great success doing this personally and for friends. Uh, I just love the product. Yeah, thank you, Steve. And if everyone still uh, can see my screen, I'll just show where you can get that. Uh, so just the front page of Neverware.com, you click Get Started for Free, uh, and that'll bring you down the page to uh, this section. So your for home uh, download is right here. You just click that, and it'll start downloading. Uh, and then uh, the education uh, licenses again are here, but do not use this link because you won't get that 15% discount. So make sure that you use Steve's, uh, which again is uh, go.neverware.com slash sh, and we'll, uh, we'll send that out. Yeah, I also put the technologyrescue.com uh, webpage link there. 
because you can always go there to access the link as well. Does anybody have any other questions? No, Jake, you did a really you. nice. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Jake, you did a really nice job. Thanks everybody for coming. Feel free to reach out directly to me. I'll put my email address in the chat if you need it. Okay. And. Jake's putting his email address and we can see him typing. Yep. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we're out of time and I just watched my email, is that correct? Yeah, and we'll send a follow-up to, to all of you who registered. Uh, Jake will send okay. it probably got tomorrow. He'll send me the information. Um, and then again, have some fun. This is a, this is a fabulous Great. product. I hope you like it as much as I do. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Absolutely. All right, thanks everybody. <laughs> Bye. All right, take care.